uh, I can start introducing the next speaker, um, Christopher Holder, uh, also from Haifa University, and this talk will be about building resilience to out of distribution visual data via input optimization. Uh, good evening, I'm Chris Holder from Khalifa University, and uh, my talk today is on input optimization for uh, resilience to outer distribution visual data. Uh, now, we had a talk earlier that covered uh, semantic segmentation. Um, so just a bit of context. Uh, semantic segmentation is a computer vision task where uh, you are trying to find a class label for every pixel in a scene. So uh, in this case, this is a, a scene from a, a car driving along a road. And we can see in the, in the resulting segmentation that vehicles are highlighted in red, the road is pink, trees and grass are green. So this is, this is the, the basic game of semantic segmentation, and it's very commonly used um, for scene understanding for navigation of autonomous systems, such as uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, but uh, a common problem is that data in the real world isn't as nice and clean and well lit and perfect as some of these data sets that we use to build our segmentation models. Um, it could be weather, rain, we don't get much of that in the UAE, but it's common in other places. Uh, fog can be a problem, bad lighting. Um, and these, these sort of effects can negatively impact uh, the performance of computer vision models. Um, and so uh, there could be safety implications, for example, in an autonomous uh, driving scenario, if your system misses a pedestrian or a cyclist, uh, that could potentially be quite dangerous. So it's serious. It's very important that we're able to deal with these kind of scenarios. Uh, it can be quite difficult to collect data of these scenarios, particularly if you're, for example, if you've got a car with a bunch of sensors on the roof, expensive cameras and, and uh, LIDARs, etc. You don't necessarily want to go out in the rain. Um, so collecting data in these kind of um, scenarios, we often uh, create synthetic data where we simulate the effects of uh, rain or fog or other weather conditions. Uh, and then we can apply those effects to existing data sets. And that means we've already got potentially thousands of images we can use. Um, and we've already got the ground truth labels that we need for training uh, vision models. Now approaches um, for dealing with these kind of uh, conditions, um, we broadly are divide them into two, two categories, uh, augmentation or pre-processing is what we're calling them. Um, so augmentation is where you augment the training data that you use. If you're, for example, if you're using a, a neural network to segment scenes, um, then you might want to include data with rain or fog or other bad conditions in the training data so that the model learns to be resilient to those effects. Or you can uh, pre-process your images, which means um, say you've got a segmentation model that's only seen nice, clean, clear weather images um, then you have another uh, another step in the in the pipeline which cleans up images. So if you have an image with rain, um, the idea might be to remove the raindrops from the image and make it look like a clear day so that the model can still uh, work with it. Um, some of these approaches are using traditional image processing methods or statistical methods. Um, or more recently, there have been uh, a lot of success with uh, generative models, neural networks like um, GANs, generative adversarial networks. So in that case, you might have a set of clear images and a set of rainy images. And the idea is that uh, your model learns to make the rainy images look like the clear images so that your uh, vision model, your segmentation model in this case, can uh, deal with them accurately. Um, but in, in most of these cases, you generally have um, a handcrafted um, objective, I suppose. So in the case of a rainy image, we, we would assume that an image without rain is better than an image with rain because we're humans, we don't like rain. So we assume that the, the raindrops is, is what's harming the, the vision model. And that's probably the case, um, but it's not always an assumption that you can make. Uh, so we come up with the idea of the input optimization network, which is uh, an image pre-processing neural network model that instead of uh, aiming to make images look necessarily a way that humans think they should. Um, it purely learns to optimize images so that a given vision model can process them accurately. So um, in this case, um, we start with an input image X, which uh, happens to be on a foggy day. Uh, we have our input optimization network, uh, ION ION, um, which we're labeling as G in this diagram. 
Uh, and the output of G then is X prime, which is uh, an optimized image uh, where we hope the fog has been removed um, and the image has been optimized so that uh, in this case, a segmentation model, which we're labeling F, uh, produces a seg segmentation map Y. Um, and then in the training process, we have a loss function, which we labeled L, uh, where the segmentation map Y is compared with the ground truth. Uh, and then that loss is, um, is used to optimize the weights of the optimization network. Um, during this whole process, the weight of the segmentation model remained fixed. So this is a segmentation model that's already been trained. It's already seen um, all the data that it had, but that data was nice, clean, sunny data. And then we use our input optimization network to, to essentially fix the, the bad data, whether in this case it's bad because of fog. Um, our approach is based on a UNET style architecture. Um, so it's an encoder decoder network where we have uh, consecutively smaller but deeper feature maps. Um, and in, and in, at each level um, of the encoder, we, uh, we add the data from the encoder back into the decoder so that we maintain um, high resolution, uh, high frequency data that could be lost due to the downsampling operations. Um, in this particular example in the diagram, this is for, uh, for very small images. We've got an input size here of 32 by 32 pixels, but in our case with segmentation, we're using um, slightly larger input images. So we use a, a, a correspondingly deeper model. Um, and we're targeting a trained deep lab segmentation model, um, which is a, a common model for semantic segmentation, um, which in our case, we trained on the Cityscapes uh, autonomous driving data set. Um, so just a little bit briefly about the data sets that we're using here. So Cityscapes is a very common semantic segmentation data set. Um, it was created by Mercedes a few years ago, um, and it's got thousands of images driving around uh, various towns in various parts of Germany. So our segmentation model has been trained purely on this Cityscapes data set. Um, but then we want to test it on these other data sets as well. So we have Cityscapes Fog and Cityscapes Rain, which take the original Cityscapes images and add uh, synthetic simulated weather effects uh, and use the same ground truth labels as the original cityscapes. Um, and then we've also got A2D2, which is the Audi autonomous driving data set. And this is a more recent um, autonomous driving data set, um, as the name suggests, created by Audi. Um, it's significantly larger than cityscapes, but it's not as widely used. Um, so in this case, um, as our segmentation model hasn't seen the Audi data before, um, it acts as a kind of domain adaptation um, problem in that um, the data is from a, a slightly different distribution. It's still um, images of roads, it's still in Germany, but it also includes highways and rural roads, whereas Cityscapes is, is mainly just in cities. Um, and it's also, um, the data is captured in a slightly different way, it's a different camera. So there are slight differences there that can make it challenging for a model that's only seen one data set to um, translate what it's learned to uh, another data set. Um, so here are some example images um, processed by our ION approach. Um, so this is this uh, model has been trained to target a segmentation model that has only seen cityscapes before. Remember, so um, you can see that the cityscapes image hasn't been um, hasn't been changed very much. There's been some slight changes in contrast and color in some areas, which presumably helps the the segmentation. Um, but if we look at the other data sets, um, the fog and the rain images, um, it's done a, a fairly good job of removing the 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 uh, impact of the weather on those images, um, as well as um, if you look, I don't know how, how, how well you can see, but there's, um, for example, some, some areas where the contrast has been changed slightly and there's um, an improvement in some of the, the, some of the edges have been emphasized. So the model is essentially learning whatever transformation it needs to make to the image to um, optimize the segmentation task. So it's, it's looking for the image features that will be most useful to that segmentation network. Uh, and in the finally in the Audi data set image we've got on the right, this happens to be an image that was taken looking directly at the sun. So we've got some unfortunate lighting there um, and it's done quite a good, good job there of removing the, um, the uh, lens flare, I suppose, from, uh, from the image there um, to help the segmentation model. So, so now to quantify that performance, um, we use the uh, intersection over union. So that's the, the average intersection of union of each of the classes in the data set. Um, in the segmentation output here against the ground truth. Um, so the first column in this table is the baseline. So this is our basic uh, deep lab segmentation model that has only been trained with the cityscapes data set. So it's never seen the fog, the rain, or the Audi images before. That's why its performance on those data sets is, is lower. 
Uh, the second column here is, is the result of the same network. So remember, that's a segmentation network that's only seen cityscapes before. Um, however, the images have been pre-processed by our trained ION. Um, and the third column is uh, we've taken a, another version of the segmentation network here, but in, in this case, we've done an additional training step where it's seen all four of the data sets. Um, and I think the, the most important part of this table here is the comparison between the ion and the fine-tuned columns. Um, so the, because the ion column, the segmentation model has never seen three of these data sets. And yet with our pre-processing, it's able to get results that are almost as good as a model that has seen those data sets. In the case of rain, it actually performs uh, better on that. Um, so finally, as an additional experiment, we thought we'd try training an additional um, optimization network, an additional ion, using this fine-tuned model as the target. So we have a segmentation model that has seen all four data sets, and then we train this ion to optimize those images for those data sets. And that gives us um, even stronger performance um, than, than either of those two approaches uh, in isolation. Um, so one important thing uh, up to this point is that in training the ion, the segmentation model has remained fixed. There's been no change in its parameters. So at this point we thought, well, what if we try uh, removing that constraint? Um, so we did what we're calling joint optimization where both networks learn to work together. So in this case, we take the baseline segmentation model that's been trained to segment cityscapes um, and we train an ion to optimize images for that model. But at the same time, while the loss function is being used to um, optimize the weights of the ion, it's also simultaneously optimizing the weights of that segmentation model. So both are learning to work with each other. Um, and that gives us uh, another significant jump in performance here. Um, so here we have some, uh, some example images from, from these various approaches. Um, at the top, um, we have the original, the top row here, the three images from the original Cityscapes data set. Uh, in the middle row, we can see versions processed by our original ion. So that's uh, a model that's been trained to optimize cityscapes images for a segmentation model, a fixed segmentation model um, that has already been trained on cityscapes. So we can see there's very subtle changes to the images, not very much. Um, some slight changes in the color here and there. Um, but then at the bottom, we've got images from our uh, joint optimization ion. So this is uh, a model that was simultaneously optimized with the segmentation model. Um, so essentially, the models allowed to just go crazy here and, and make whatever changes it needs to, to the images, um, and then the segmentation model can learn and adapt to those changes. So we see um, a huge change in, in, in the color and the contrast in these images, almost to the point where they're looking sort of like a, uh, like a cartoon, almost, I suppose. Um, presumably, this kind of effect uh, is the sort of image that, uh, that the segmentation model is able to get the best possible results from. Uh, so finally, if this is going to work, this is a, a short video that's going to loop to, to show the effect that this uh, pre-processing method has on the, the end resulting segmentation. Um, so in this talk, I've mainly covered weather effects, rain and fog, um, but we've also done some experiments using underexposed imagery. So in this case, we've, we've essentially darkened the images, but it, it's a bit of more of a more complex algorithm than that. It, it aims to simulate camera underexposure. So um, dark areas have been uh, very compressed. There's a lot of detail lost. Um, and you can see, um, so the top left image here are, the, are these darkened images and the bottom left images are the outputs of our optimization network. And on the right, we've got the corresponding segmentations there. So there are some cases here, for example, uh, right there, there's a cyclist uh, on the right there that's missed in the dark images because they're hard to see. But after we've optimized the images, um, the model is able to segment that cyclist and see them waiting at the lights there. Um, so potentially there are, there are uh, very real safety implications um, if an autonomous car is driving and the images from the camera are uh, less than ideal. Um, so that's it from me. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Well, I will start asking one question. I'm thinking about the, the problem of out of distribution data in general. Um, I'm thinking, well, I mean, I'm not really an expert of this field, but I, I wanted to ask, I mean, I, I remain I mind a different domain of application. 
I, and the, the question is if you can apply this technique there or if it's a completely different type of challenge. I'm thinking about the underwater domain in which uh, data sets are by definition uh, scarce, so obtaining data with uh, very different conditions over the same, uh, let's say, location is very challenging or even at some time you would need to go to completely different location or at different depth. So do you think that in this uh, domain you can apply the same techniques or from the point of view of the problem in general, it is a completely different nature and it requires a different way of thinking? Um, so for underwater imagery, um, potentially, yes, it's something that we are um, starting to look at. Um, if you have um, some vision model um, that can perform some task using um, imagery captured um, in, in just a normal environment that's not filled with water um, as long as you have if you have some imagery then um, from underwater you could potentially use a model like this to um, optimize that imagery so that it works with a with a standard vision model yes Uh, so we are kind of on time, so, but I think we can afford answering the questions that just appeared on the chat. I will uh, read them. So in case of weather change, uh, such as uh, rain and fog, how, does the how is the technique affected? That's the first question. So, um, yeah, so here, here we've got some, some examples, rain and fog images. Um, the, these are um, simulated rain and fog. They're not, not, they're not real images. Um, but so you can see, um, for example, the raindrops are... Um, are occluding lots of part of the scene, um, adding a, a high frequency feature that can confuse the model and the, and the fog as well as problematic because there are parts of the scene that you literally cannot see because they're covered in fog. Um, and then underneath we've got um, how our approach deals with these images. Um, so the, the rain images, it, well, it literally looks like a sunny day. The raindrops have been removed um, and our results show that the segmentation model can um, accurately segment these images once the raindrops have been removed and the fog um, similarly, you can see some cars in the distance that were barely visible in the fog. Um, so our approach is specifically designed to handle these types of scenarios and, and stop the failure cases that, that would happen normally in the segmentation um, when, when, uh, when, when these weather effects are present. Um, so the, so the, the other question about um, uh, applicable in real time. This is, um, we haven't um, really measured the, the performance in terms of frame rates or, or time it takes, but it's a fairly compact um, UNET based model. And we've actually done a few experiments, which I didn't cover here, um, using levels of di different size, different complexity. Um, so what we found is that um, for this particular task, we can reduce the size of the network roughly by a factor of four. And we found we actually got slightly better results in that case. Um, and we can reduce it again by another factor of four and the results are only marginally worse. So there's definitely potential here for using quite a compact model, which, which wouldn't really add much computation to, to the model you're already running for segmentation. Thank you very much again, Christopher. This was a very interesting uh, talk and discussion.